When you're building a PC, you have to make sure each and every one of your components fits inside that case. You don't want it to be too huge that it takes up the entire desk, leaving you with no room to actually work on your machine. And you don't want your brand new PC on the floor. But then also, you don't want a case so small that you can't fit anything in it. And if you can, you can't upgrade later on. You have to find that perfect balance between large and tiny. I might have that case for you. Today I bring you an unboxing and an overview of the brand new Fractal Design Meshify 2 Compact RGB case. This case is supposed to bring everything you want in the larger cases Squeeze it. into a tiny case. Now unfortunately I won't be able to do the full build and the full review of the case in this video because I'm still waiting for a few parts but we should be ready for a brand new build on the next video coming up. Stay tuned for that one but let's get to the unboxing. So here we are again, the Meshafite 2 RGB compact case okay, along the sides over here, this side and this side, we can see this side has Meshafite 2, serial number, model number, EAN, UPC, JAN code, and then the bottom has some of the features and specs, all of which we would go through during this video. And as I always love when they show you the complete blown up view of the case, I love when they do that. So let's go ahead and unbox it real quick. Oh, okay, so I wasn't expecting to see all this blue. Kind of threw me for a loop with my double vision and all, but still kind of nice to see. So we could see right when we opened it up, just foam along the top with their F. Nothing else, so let's go ahead and flip it over. Along the top here, the Meshify 2 compact user guide. We'll get back to this in a second. So real quick, before we get to the actual internals of the case, the case is a little over 16 inches long from the foot to the top, a little over 18 inches tall. And along the front is eight inches wide. So not incredibly huge, but not incredibly small either. So first thing I love to do That one was not that good. So we can see a little bit of the inside right now, but the case includes four Aspect 12 ARGB fans, this being one of them, seven IO expansion slots right over here, along with the IO for the IO shield, the rear of the motherboard. Then we can see down here, spot for a standard size power supply. Right over here where you could potentially find vertical mounting, we see a little opening, kind of normal in these kind of cases, though you cannot install a vertically mounted card. I'm sure you can modify the case to include one, but out of the box, you cannot. All right, and then solid over here. With this over here, there is this little slider that you could just pull out and remove the case. It is completely toolless, or remove the side panel, I should say. It is completely toolless. I didn't have to unscrew anything. I just pulled that back, just like I'm gonna put it back in here. Pull it back, and it just comes off really easily. The side panel attaches to the bottom of the case with these little hooks and then latches right up here at the front and the rear as well. Very nice design over here with these little pegs that slide into these little holes right up here in the case. Now we can see along the motherboard tray, there is a large opening for the back of the motherboard along the CPU. So we could put a mounting mechanism for a liquid cooling unit or one of the larger air cooling units. You can see two rubber grommets over here so we can slide some cables through in from the back or out from the inside. Then one, two, three Velcro wraps for better cable management along the front as well, where we could see all of the IO cables for the power button, reset button, USB type C, HD audio, the microphone and headphones and USB 3.0 ports, everything coming along the front over here. And then two more rubber grommets along the side of the motherboard. Coming down a little bit more, we can see the spot for two 2.5 inch drives, be it hard drives or SSDs. And moving these out of the way, we can find two trays for two 2.5 inch drives or two 3.5 inch drives. Removing the bottom one, just undo that thumb screw. 
and it slides out really easily. Here we can find the accessories box and we'll go over this in one second. Then down here is where you can screw in those 2.5 inch SSDs, hard drives or 3.5 inch drives. You can put two of them. And then coming in over here for the power supply, there are four rubber pads right over here to help stop the noise from the vibration on the fan on the power supply. And then we can see the little cutouts here for the filter for the fans on the bottom of the power supply so that it won't suck up dust. Coming along the front of the case, very well known design over here. A little bit odd the way it captures the lighting and all the different angles, but it's their normal design. And then we can see the Fractal logo right over here. We can also remove that filter that we saw along the back right over here comes all the way from the front of the case to the rear easily washable just put it under a sink run some water over it let it dry and when it's dry just slide it back in goes in pretty easily and like most of their cases you might have to take this off but you can easily remove the front panel removing the front panel allows you to open up the front filter. If you wanted to remove the filter, you could. That way you would just have this kind of mesh design over here without that filter. So you'll get a little more airflow inside of the case, but removing the front panel gives you access to the three 120 millimeter ARGB fans. And then also if you wanted to replace these fans with a liquid cooling unit, you could. Again, up to a 360 millimeter liquid cooling unit you could fit up here. Now coming around this side, just like we did for the opposite side, just pull the glass out and it literally falls right out. You just have to make sure you hold it and it should have that same filter over here. But this is not satisfying. Different material. So coming along the inside of the case, we can find a hole right over here. That way we can fit some cables, maybe the HD audio cable. That's the perfect spot for it. Bring it up here, typically plug it in right over here. And then also some USB ports as well, 2.0. We'll find some more rubber grommets over here. That way we can fit the front panel IO, USB ports, USB 2.0, 3.0, and other types of cables right through here. Maybe even PCIe cables. Coming over a little bit more to the right inside of the case. We can find two more rubber grommets right over here, coming from the back, as I showed you earlier, over here and over here. This way we can fit some SATA cables, PCIe cables, and other random cables right through over here, maybe up here, ATX24 pin, and then that filter right above the power supply. Looking a little odd, though everybody has their own taste, you are able to put those two SSD trays here or here. And instead of putting it in the back, you can put it up here or you can order additional trays so you can have more drives. Right down here, we can remove this panel so that we could slide in a radiator up at the front. I might have to explore that possibility. Now, unlike most cases, on this case, at the very top, if you needed to, you can actually remove the top so that you can access the top of the motherboard to make it a lot easier as well to install a liquid cooling radiator right up at the top. There's also a few other things up at the top I'd like to show you. Along this top, we can easily unscrew And we should be able to remove the top panel. Exposing the top mesh filter, we can just slide it backwards and then we can lift it out. Then we have access to where we can install the radiator. Something just fell from up here. It looks like an ARGB cover. I'll have to find that. The pins will expose and touch the metal. You don't want that happening, but easily comes off, just lift it, slide it and pull it out. So then here to make things easy, you can just lay your liquid cooling unit down flat, take this off of the case, put it on your liquid cooling unit, screw it in and then put it back. That'll save you a ton of hassle from working up here. And then it frees up so much space inside of the case unobstructed right over here, except for the back and the sides, but the front you're unobstructed. So, 
I love the fact that they did that. I think that's an awesome addition. The other cool thing is because of the way that they made all the cabling and everything and the front panel, you don't need to get rid of that cabling or maybe just maneuver it nicely so you don't pull everything out. This isn't connected to that other panel. So that's an awesome feature. Now, each of the fans attached to this case, this is the rear 120, has the ARGB extension, the male side, you can see that right over here, the pin sticking out, and then the female side, so that you can plug into here, just putting that because I don't want that to get lost. And then of course, the same type of extensions for the fans, you could plug in this four pin PWM header to the motherboard. And then over here would be an extender. So you can plug in a fan into a fan, into a fan, into a fan, potentially all four of these fans off of one header rather than four separate headers. That's a great addition as well. Now, very important to mention, this case will fit up to an ATX motherboard. The standoffs included here, 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 and here are already configured for an ATX motherboard. Some ATXs will also utilize this one right over here or this port over here, but you can also put a mini ATX and a micro ATX aside from an ATX motherboard inside of this case. Now at the bottom of the case, we can see this is where that filter would have gone. So if I put it back, Right over here, this is where the power supply would be down towards the back of the case. And then up here is where the hard drive tray would be. Then the feet also give you an inch of breathing room in between the base, wherever you stand the case on, plenty of space for that power supply to breathe. Or if you have any additional fans blowing air upwards, pulling in from the bottom of the case, you could do that as well and you would have that filter up here. So that'll give you plenty of clearance. Now the top of the case has a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a USB type C connection, a power button, an RGB button. In case you don't have RGB on your motherboard, you can still utilize RGB off of the fans, but you will have to use the predefined profiles that they have on those fans. And then two USB 3.0 ports. And then for the front panel, these are all the ports that we'll find. So first off, the USB Type-C port definitely comes in handy for newer cases. HD audio for the front panel headphones and microphone jack. Then we'll find the USB 3.0 port for a USB 3.0 header on your motherboard. And then a SATA power connector. This would be for the RGB controller on the case itself. And this you would connect to a SATA port on the power supply. Then coming from the front fans, and I have to undo this Velcro tie. PWM fan headers and extensions, and then also extension ARGB connections, and then the female side as well. Because there are three fans, there are three sets of these cables and three sets of these cables. So again, with these cables, you can plug this fan into the motherboard, into one of the PWM headers, and then another fan into here and another fan into there and another fan into the other one. Same goes with these connections as well. This would go connected to the motherboard. And then you would connect the other fan into here and then the other fan into the other side of this and so on. That way you can connect both lighting and PWM wise for power in one port rather than three ports, one for every single fan. And then last but not least is the power switch. This will go connected into the front panel header on the motherboard for the power button. Now, very important to mention, if you will be putting a radiator up in here, there can only be a 40 millimeter height max your radiator cannot be thicker than 40 millimeters. Now, being that you can only put a 360, a 280, a 240, a 140, or a 120, the fans max can be 145 millimeters in width over here. All right, so now inside of this baggie, again, the Fractal Meshify 2 Compact User's Guide, on the red document, attention, English, in the event of having received a faulty product, before returning any product, please contact a reseller or Fractal Design. Most issues can be quickly and easily solved through the support team. Most case parts are removables and are easily replaced by spare parts. So definitely good information to have just in case. 
and then the user's guide is going to go over everything that we're going to go over in the next video in the build video so you can kind of skip this it's definitely good information to have just in case additional information and again like i love it shows every single view blown up but we're going to go through a complete build and i'm going to show you everything inside of this manual so stay tuned for that coming up real soon and then here is the meshify 2 compact accessories box this came in the ssd tray all right so completely empty they include here a nice wipe to wipe all your greasy fingerprints off of the case definitely a good addition here if anything you can use it for your screen i love when they include these then the baggie with accessories and i already spot my favorite accessory this is the standoff screw now mind you this one is plastic typically they come in metal but you push this over a standoff on the motherboard like we saw earlier for the ATX form factor and then you use a Phillips head screwdriver unscrew it and then easily you can move that standoff somewhere else or just remove it from your build entirely definitely great to have then we have eight of these smaller zip ties I don't like to use these but every so often they come in handy Then here is an additional standoff in case we need one extra. All right, then over here we will find nine mounting screws for your hard drive. And then over here, four of the power supply screws, these little hex head screws four of those for your power supply along with the screws that I showed you earlier the nine screws for the hard drives these are the rubber pieces to stop vibration from the hard drives and then 16 mounting screws for the motherboard And then eight of the drive screws for SSDs and 2.5 inch mechanical drives. And those are all of the accessories. And while I did mention it earlier, I'm going to go over it again because I have the case open. We are able to fit up to almost a 14 inch graphics card right in here now if we added a radiator of course that's going to be maybe a 12.5 inch depending how thick that radiator is so this gives me plenty of hope for my favorite configuration you'll find that out on my next video and as always in most fractal cases the power supply shroud does have the fractal logo on there i kind of like it now for the power supply, in case you haven't run into this particular configuration before, this has a frame. You don't just slide in a power supply and it's going to fit. You would have to remove this frame, just undo these two thumb screws. Then you would attach this to the power supply, slide the power supply in, and then screw in this frame. And you're good to go. In this video, we've done a complete unboxing and overview of the Fractal Design Meshify 2 RGB Compact Case. Now, normally I would do a complete build and a complete review of this case, but unfortunately, I am missing a few pieces coming soon. In my next video, you will see a complete build and complete review inside of this case, so stay tuned for that. If it's already up, I'll go ahead and link it up above. If not, I'll go ahead and link up, for the meantime, my previous build with the Fractal Design Meshify 2 RGB case. The daddy of this case, of course. Yeah, see you guys.